Hey guys, it's me again, 12 inch PV Penis, and we're here with another video. I get this question a lot. It is why free to play players should go infantry. First off, you guys are new here. I'd like to welcome you guys to the channel. Over here, we are a 53.5 million power free to play player on day 290. Our goal was to hit T5 within 10 months. We ended up doing it on day 273. And those are my credentials or my prerequisites. When I tell you advice, it is because I have either done it or wish I did do it in the past from the advantage of an actual free-to-play player. So jumping right into the video, the first thing that I thought of when I wanted to be an infantry player is the healing cost off top. When you heal infantry versus cavalry or archers, it costs food and wood, but it doesn't cost stone. Stone is something that a lot of players are looking for, and wood is something that is in very, very low demand. So if you are looting and you're looting a lot of stone, it is very easy for you to trade stone for food and especially stone for wood. People might just give it to you for free. However, people are generally looking for stone. So this puts you on a different scale than the cavalry players and they will give you resources that they don't need for resources that you do need. Overall, it's really nice to be able to heal your troops for different resources than the status quo generally is. Another thing is that infantry commanders, especially early game, don't require whole investments. To give you some examples of this, we will look at Constantine. Constantine, unless you're using him as a garrison, which a free-to-play player generally shouldn't be doing anyway, all he needs is 5511 to be usable as a very good tank and support unit. Guan Yu is a pretty powerful commander at 5111 when you use him in the open field. If you're going to be doing optimal counter rallies with him, obviously you'd want to expertise him, but at 5111, he's pretty strong. And I think that's really good for a free-to-play player looking for good commanders to invest in. The fact that you can put 50 sculptures into this guy and have him be serviceable in the open field is very, very good. Another example of this is going to be Martel. I particularly like Charles Martel because he is completely free. After a certain amount of time, you will just get him to 5511 from Keys alone. Obviously, expertising him is awesome, but he's not worth putting universal sculptures into. But you'll get him absolutely free to a usable state within a reasonable amount of time. I personally got my Charles Martel the 5511 on day 265. While RNG may vary for different people, overall you're still going to be looking at a pretty decent time to get Charles Martel right around where you're hitting max tech or T5 as a free-to-play player. Aside from those piecemeal commanders, some other things you should be looking at is that infantry has a really strong foothold in the meta for open field. I think that Richard and Martel are generally ignored while Alex also tends to do a ton of damage, they have a lot of tanky stats and do particularly well in runes and altars. They don't have many rally issues. They're not necessarily the strongest rallies in the game, as cavalry obviously take that. However, Guan Alex rallies are great counter rallies, and if you want to be rallying flags or cities, especially if you're going back to KVK2, you can be doing that with an Alex YSG march. I'm not saying that this is the best thing on the planet, but I'm saying that infantry marches are so versatile. What you might use in terms of meta here can also be used in different areas, and versatility is something that's very important for free-to-play players. Another important thing is that the main lineup for free-to-play players in terms of their infantry lineup does not use Mightiest Governor events. This is especially good when you compare it to something like cavalry. Alex is a wheel commander, Guan is a wheel commander, Martell is from Keys, and Richard is a wheel commander. On top of that, you're also using YSG, another wheel commander, as a secondary for a lot of your marches. This is incredibly good because you don't have to compete in Mightiest Governor events where T5 players obviously have an advantage because you won't hit T5 until much later you'll probably have one or two expertise commanders by that point. When I give you the fact that the main lineup does not use Mightiest Governor event, obviously I am avoiding the topic of Constantine. I think Constantine is good as a 5-5-1-1. However, he's not absolutely mandatory to have. And I think that's very important. Or if you compare it with Cavalry, who needs Attila mandatorily, who needs Saladin mandatorily, you can't really look at them in the same light when your first slam dunk cavalry commander is on the Mightiest Governor event, but your first real insane infantry commander, Alexander, is on the wheel. It's just not the same beast. When we look at archers, I think archers shouldn't even be really entered in the conversation because you're not going to see any good archers that are going to be useful for free to play until you're seeing Artemisia and Ramses maybe. I don't think Edward and Tommy are really viable. YSG is obviously an archer that you'd be looking for, but what would be your early commander pairing? like a 5511 El Cid that you got from Keys and a YSG, just seems a little dubious at best. I think that we should leave the archers to the spenders. And if you want to invest in a cavalry march later, that's obviously your prerogative. 
However, I'm saying for the early game for free to play players, this is why I would suggest that you go infantry. My final point is gonna be over what you get in terms of your epic commanders. Now for cavalry, you get Bybars and Pelagius. You get Belisarius too, but he's not really a cavalry commander. He's more of a farm hitter, which is you know good in itself, but you don't particularly need to invest in a cavalry to get use out of that. However, Bybars and Pelagius aren't bad. However, when you compare them to the commanders that infantry gets for their epics, Eulogy is pretty good. However, you get Sun Tzu as an epic for infantry. Now, you get the best key commander in the game, which is Charles Martel, and on top of that, you get the best combat epic in the game. Joan of Arc is a support epic, and that's why I'm not considering her a combat epic for this, but you get the best key legendary, and you get the best epic combat commander in the game, and they're both basically free for free-to-play players. It's very difficult to ascribe a reason why you would look at anything else in this game and you'd go, oh, I, sh I shouldn't... I shouldn't invest in this Sun Tzu and this Martel and this Richard and this Guan and this Alex. There are just too many good things for infantry to make you want to do something else. At the end of the day, I'm not trying to tell people how they should play. I'm simply saying what would be most optimal to do. So if you feel it absolutely necessary to max a Genghis Khan and use all of your speed ups on Saladin and that's what you find fun. I am not here to take away your guys' fun. I'm just here to tell you what you probably should do if you were to look to make your account in the most optimal way possible. Another little bonus fact that I would add about infantry is Joan of Arc gives 30% buffs to all different types of commanders. However, she only gives a health buff to infantry specifically. So if you guys are receiving buffs in the open field, receiving a 30% health buff on infantry would be absolutely insane. Whereas a 30% attack buff or a 30% defense buff might be a little more lackluster. I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you guys are watching right now, it means we are currently live on Twitch. You can find that in the description below. And if you wanna ask me questions or comment about how you thought the video was, you can definitely find me live right there. If you guys are watching this just as soon as it came out. If you guys are looking to ask me questions while I'm offline on Twitch or give me new video ideas, the way you can do that is check out the Discord in the description below. I like to catch up on all the YouTube comments that I possibly can, but sometimes I miss them. And if your question is very pressing, Adding me on Discord is generally the best way to get a hold of me. Have a great one, guys, and I hope you all enjoy the video.